What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach Sinstrom and welcome to the channel. Today we're doing the install on the Airlift 3P air management system. Uh, if you didn't see the last video of the install of the air struts in the front and the bag shock combo in the rear for my Chrysler 300, I'll put the link tag right here. So as I said in the last video, I did the 3P setup. Um, I, I'm just not a fan of the H. I don't want the adjustable height arms and stuff all in my car. But in realistic terms, if you have a lot of people in and out of your car or whatever, it's a great setup. It's the ideal setup. It's usually just me in my car. So the 3P is fine. I'll just get it aligned and everything with the PSI with me in the car should be perfect. And I can go over that whenever we cross that bridge and go get it aligned. As well as all the adjustments that are going to need to be made probably in the next video with... I didn't take these out. but So these keys do the alignment. I got to move these and get this in the right spot on all of these. So, as you can see, it's red on this rear one. So, I got to get those all aligned properly, and I'll go over that in the next video once everything is set up. So, Airlift 3P, this instructions is amazing. I'm a visual person. You know, I'm not going to go through all this with you guys. But, wait for it. Wait for it. That's for the H. Bam, I am a visual guy. And this right here is amazing. It's every, it's all the plumbing for the airlines. It's all the wiring. This wire harness was rolled up really nice uh, until I laid it all out and then tried to roll it back up. But this, I mean, it all comes with the fuses. They're all inline fuses, the relay, plug. Uh, there's a fuse in here somewhere, but oh, here's an inline fuse. We've got zip ties, crimps. We've got oh, there's fuse. Um, airline cutter, which is really cool that they give you this. Um, here is the actual brain. I don't know what they actually call it. I'm calling it a brain. This is where the wire harness plugs into. And then you have your focus. So, sorry, I can't read this. So we got front left, front right, rear left, rear right, tank, and empty. Or exhaust, rather, sorry. So we got more fittings. We've got bags of fittings. This is the cover and filter for the compressor. Quarter inch airline is what I chose to run, again, I'm running this smaller tank setup and one single, excuse me, one single 444C. I guess you can't see that. And it says, okay, dual pack compressor. Now, we're gonna go in there, we're going to get a rough setup. As I said in the previous video as well, this is a temporary setup. I will be going with a bigger tank and another compressor to run dual compressors, it just makes everything a lot easier for this car, because it is a heavy car. We're gonna be doing everything down here for now. As you can see, everything is empty. Um, my next setup is going to be a tank mounted up here. I just don't have time to build brackets and I don't have the other compressor and I'm gonna get a rear strut tower brace. So I need to make sure that everything clears. So that's the next setup. Right now we're just trying to get it done and get it roadworthy again. Uh, because after doing all the plumbing for the bags and all the wiring for the management, moving the tank and running a little extra line to that, running an extra compressor, won't be a problem. So we'll get the gist of everything that we need to do today. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. 
I'll try to give you guys a step-by-step -step, or if it's an important thing, something that I should show you as I'm doing it, I will touch base on that. Other than that, it's just me in here working. So I need to be able to work, get stuff done, and then I can't record while I'm running line. So I'm just gonna keep you guys updated as we go. And hopefully that's sufficient. I'm not a very good how-to YouTuber. I like to vlog. This is gonna be a vlog related vlog. No, just a vlog style install. Just as my last one. It's just the style that I YouTube. Anywho. So here is the harness. This one goes to the 3P remote, which I haven't showed you guys yet. Great, I'm gonna break it while I'm trying to show you guys. It's really in there. All right, come on. It's really hard to do with one hand. So I'm gonna plug into this. So this will have to go up near the driver's seat. This is the drain filter. It's a filter, mistake. So we have the power wire, and then we have the remote for the ignition. If I'm not mistaken, that's what those two are. Looks like that should be what those are. Now all this is actually going to be in the rear, so I'm going to loop all this back around. Then we have, these are for the height sensors if I was running 3H. We have the main relay. We have power and ground. This would go to the second compressor, if I'm not mistaken. And then this plugs into the brain. I believe this is going to be my temporary setup. So I'm able to run all my airlines in here with that. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a trick that was told to me by a buddy for getting the ignition wire back here instead of having to run it all the way up the car and tap into the front. So I need to make a template to get my holes set up for mounting this. This I can just drill straight through. Don't really need a template for that. Same with this, I can drill straight through. It's got a mount there. And on this side, once those are mounted, I can start running airline because I can't run airline because I need to get it from, we'll say point A. I'm probably gonna, I'll show you guys where I think I'm gonna drill through. Probably gonna drill through right here on both sides. Run them up here, then I can run this line. Come get it close to right here and then I'll be able to bring it in tie it into there same thing with over there it'll come through tie in with this and then come through to right there that is the plan um we'll see how that works but i can't run airline until everything in here is mounted so that i know exactly how long to get the airline the only thing i need to go get from like i say his hardware is where i'll probably go is i thought line clamps and grommets were provided so unless i have misplaced them which i don't think i did i don't have those so i need to go buy grommets so that the airline that is traveling through the hole that i drill isn't rubbing on drilled straight metal i need a, a rubber grommet to ensure that we don't have any airline failures and as far as the airline clamps or the line clamps it would basically be something like this but for the quarter inch airline so that i can basically mount this up in here somewhere um and then if i'm not mistaken as well chargers and challengers i could be wrong please correct me if i am chargers and challengers don't have this insulated piece on the bottom of their car like 300s do for sound dampening, I'm assuming. Now, you can't see in here, 
But what I think I'm going to do is I'll be able to, there's a channel straight through. You'll see it goes straight down there, which I should be able to run an airline, which will keep it encapsulated from anything kicking up and hitting it. So it should be pretty safe traveling from front to rear. Again, that is my assumption because what it'll do is it'll come out through here and I can run it up along or something we'll figure out what it's going to do back here might travel it up and over again not a hundred percent I actually need to get in to do that but we've got to get templates made for this first so that is my thought process as of right now uh we will touch base I just need to get everything mounted We'll go from there, let you guys know what's going on. So I'm going to cut out this perimeter and have this as a template. You can see in here, I made little marks where I need to do that. This little hole is a drain for the filter, which I'm just going to have it going straight down so I can drill a hole straight through. Ugh, show you guys. So this right here drains to outside. So I'm just going to have that hose going straight down and put a little grommet on that hole coming down at the bottom of that. So I figured I'd do all that with one. So I'm going to get this cut out, get it in here so that I can drill the holes and get this mounted. So here's the template. So all we'll do is we're just going to pick the tank up. We'll drill the five holes, four for that, one for there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a marker and then just tab those and do the same thing right here. And we'll have all of this in its final spot. I like this spot right here because it's level, completely level. This is in a pretty good spot. It also has rubber bushings. Then that is in a flat spot as well. The tank is mounted. The compressor is mounted. The brain is mounted. Show you guys. So there's bolts for the compressor, brain, tank. So I already went ahead and connected this line to the tank inlet this one's the exhaust and then like I said these are the four bags uh, this is bolted up Teflon taped all these got these done and I also got it's hard to see also have the drain line uh, is in note to self make sure you put all those fittings on the tank before you mount the tank it'll just save you a lot of hassle if everything is already Teflon taped and torqued down. Uh, show you guys this. I don't know if you saw it underneath. This is the drain line. I can probably cut some of that off. Um, I need to run the drain line from the tank and that has to run to the outside of the car as well, as well as this exhaust line. I can leave it open or I can run a line outside the car. Since I already have to run this line, the drain line outside of the car, I'm gonna go ahead and run that outside as well. So it'll probably, I'm thinking I'm gonna take it out this way, which should put me above the exhaust and that little wall area up there. It's hard to hold the camera and get around the exhaust. And then I can mount it how I would like. This is just a lot of planning. So I'm way too OCD for this. So this is taking me longer than if I was just winging it. But now that everything back here is set up, I can start running lines. So like I said, I'm going to run those two exhaust lines outside of the car. And then I'm going to start getting all the, the four corners ran up to the brain. And then I'll drill holes and show you guys what I'm doing. We picked up some grommets. They might be too small. 
Um, I'll see if they're going to work. If not, I can make it work afterwards. We also got some line clamps. Um, so let's run some lines. Okay, so I kind of went on a, a run of wiring things up instead of plumbing. So I actually read the instructions and it said to leave this inside the vehicle. And then I just got the little shredder valve right here in case I need to add air to it. No, I just got that kind of tucked away. Now, the wire harness, I kind of just rolled up and stuck out of the way. This will be a little bit cleaner once it's all done. I know it looks like a mess right now. This is the line that needs to go all the way up for the remote. I am going to be tapping into this fuse right here, which if you look is number 12 interesting thing about number 12 is it usually stays on these bottom two slots which is the cigar lighter <laughs> that's funny no one smokes cigars in cars well you shouldn't if you do and if you move it up to the top one you'll have a constant power and then the middle ground so now my cigarette lighter should be constant and this bottom one will be ignition so I'm going to tap into this one for the ignition wire, which is this pink wire. And then get this out of the way. Here is the, I'll cut this tape. We got ground and positive, which I'll just tap into the actual battery source. The wire is coming off for the compressor. And now I'm going to splice those. Um, as well as this ignition pink wire, I will be putting in an inline fuse which is provided uh, the exhaust port for the thing. I ran down here just so that both of those are right there. So after this is all plugged in, um, let's see, cause I didn't use the height sensors and then everything else is being used. I'm kind of, I'll zip tie all this up and it'll look, it'll really be out of the way. It'll just be tied in with all the other wires. Of course, I've got a mess of stuff right here. Um, when it's all done, it should look really well. Now, the wiring is almost completely done besides running it up for the remote. I now just got to splice stuff, heat shrink some things, and then tap it all in. Then we just have plumbing. That's all that's really left. And uh, like I said earlier, I pretty much have the routing for the plumbing done. We just have to do it. So there was a push pin right in here, but the rest were 10 millimeters. And this is gonna be perfect, guys. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see there's a line already right there. I'm just going to run it down that all the way down. Perfect. And we got the leader hose, the line clamp, this. Now that line is going all the way under. Ugh, and it's tucked right in there, all the way down on that channel, which works super, super, super good. Uh, so we're going to come out right here. Went ahead and zip lined it right there for the time being. Tucked it up under the filler neck. That should go around under. I will tuck this and make sure it's good. We have this line going in from the rear bag. And what we did is we cut two holes right there. Drilled two holes, rather. Now, there's no grommet in it just yet because I'm probably going to have to open them up a little bit. And then we have a lot of extra hose going into those so that I can trim it down once we are good to go. Now, the reason I didn't do it more so up here is because I was looking at this and this padding is going to end up covering right there. So I just brought it out to where there's no insulation so I don't have to trim anything on the insulation. We will get grommets for in there. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I need to remove the insulation padding that's under the car. I'm going to run the line for the front and the rear. We'll do the same thing and drill the two holes right there. And then we'll run the line to those. And it should be ready for testing. We'll test and see if there's any leaks or anything else. But super close. One side to go. It's been a long day. We're super close. I decided to call it a night because I haven't ate today and I forgot because I've been working on the car. So I need to eat and get some rest because I got work in the morning. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. And we're back. Uh, we're just going to pick up where we left off, which is I've got to run the airlines. I already got the holes drilled. We got to get airline to this bag and this strut. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to drop this down and knock it out. Okay, everything is done. Everything is plumbed. I still got to cut the wires, of course, because or the airlines, because it's a mess. But I need to make sure that I had extra. Now, um, I double checked all the wiring. I put in the provided three amp fuse here, 30 amp fuse here. I went ahead and instead of tying the ground wire from the harness to the battery, I went ahead and tied it in with this factory ground here, just so that all the wiring stays over there. I'm not tying it into this. Everything is done. Let's go. Moment of truth. We'll start the car and we'll see if everything turns on. I did go ahead and use the compressor to put air in the tank just to go ahead and see if there's any leaks. So there's probably about 100 PSI already in the tank. And I, as of right now, I don't see any leaks. But let's see what happens. I can hear the compressor. is going up that's a good sign it looks like we did it first try guys yes not bad for my first attempt but uh like i said man they give a really good uh instruction manual here and now is calibration time um we're gonna go ahead and let's see what this does I don't know if y'all can even read this. It's not focusing. So in the middle it says star. Yeah, y'all aren't gonna be able to read this because I gotta get it too close. I'm gonna go ahead and play with this real quick and uh, compressor turns off at 149. Good to know. Let's um go ahead and calibrate. Well, system is calibrated. Everything, it was a just a questionnaire. It asked a few questions and then it went through and tested the front and rear PSIs and made sure everything was in order. Um, now is time to, well, since I had my calipers off, I need to bleed the brakes before I can get the wheels and everything back on to get it on the ground to test this out. So I'm gonna cut this short. Or not cut this short because it's probably a long video. Actually, let's kill the car. Now, this was basic install. Again, I'm gonna tie up some of these, not tie them up, but trim them down, get them to where they need to go. I showed you guys all the wiring. Um, this is still just ran up there right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take off some of the interior, run that how I want. I wanted to just make sure to test the system before I got everything in order. Um, I still need to put grommets in. 
So when I take the easel out, I can do that. But that is a basic setup. I pretty much gave you guys and showed you uh, what I'm gonna do. There's the airline on this side, which I'm gonna put a probably a line clamp or something in there. But this was a basic setup. This is for the air management for a 3P setup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications because in the next video, we're gonna be doing some of the adjusting, as I said earlier, to adjust the heights on the shocks and the struts. And then you're gonna see it on the ground, guys. So please stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.